What does it mean to be different if you're a Weddell seal in Antarctica? Ecologists from Montana State University are studying individual variation in Weddell seals as a part of a long-term population study funded by the National Science Foundation. One of the fundamental questions in biology has to do with individual differences. Are individuals at birth different from one another in their qualities? Individual differences among animals can come from several sources. We have the genetics that they get from their parents. We have also nutritional features from the mother that may be passed on. Some mothers may be better at uh, feeding their young and giving them more nutrition. They may teach them more things, so some mothers may swim with their babies more and so perhaps pass on skills and so we can have differences in individuals that occur after birth, after the genetics are in place, and so we end up with what we call phenotypic differences, so appearance differences, where even given two animals with the same genetics, we might end up with animals with different performance characteristics because of things that happen after. We often hear about nature versus nurture, so we have the idea that nature of the animal may be being related to the genetics and then the, the nurturing part being what happens to you after the fact of your genetics. So we're interested in trying to work on both. Weddell seals are true seals and are found only in Antarctica. They are the southernmost mammal on Earth and live in the most pristine marine environment remaining on our planet. They are great divers and swim far under the frozen sea ice to return to pupping colonies where they can give birth where there are no natural predators that might prey on their vulnerable new pups. This Weddell seal study is one of the longest running population studies ever of a long-lived mammal. It arose out of the work in the early 60s by Ian Sterling and was taken up and continued by Don Sinniff and others at the University of Minnesota beginning in the late 60s. In 2002, the study was continued by Jay Rotella and Bob Garrett at Montana State University working with Don Seneff. Over the many decades of the project, numerous graduate students have been involved and have attained their advanced degrees based on their work with the project. One of the nice things in a long-term study like this is we have complete reproductive histories on thousands of females. And so what we're able to do is look for individual differences in how long some of these females live and how many babies some of these females produce. What we've been able to learn about individual animals by tagging them at birth and then following them for many years until they disappear from the population is that 80% of the pups never return, but of those 20% that do return as young adults, some might produce no pups even though they've survived to adulthood and are sexually mature. Some may produce one or two pups and then disappear from the population, which we're pretty sure means that they died. This year, the team found a 30-year-old Weddell mom with her 21st pup, a record for the project. Recently, the researchers have found through studying a 30-year database of the reproductive history of thousands of Weddell moms that there is strong evidence that some females are better at producing pups than others. Before this study, it was not known if the difference in the number of pups that different moms produced over a lifetime was due to random chance or due to fixed differences among the seals. The new findings indicate that it's due to real or fixed differences in individual quality. The root causes of the fixed differences are not yet known, but several possibilities exist. Among them are the differences in females' genetics, the type of mother and early care that the female had when she was a pup, and the type of environmental conditions that yeah. the female experienced early in life. Regardless of the underlying cause, it is now clear that some female seals are robust producers who have lots of pups during their lifetimes. Others are more frail and have few pups, while most fall somewhere in the middle and have the average number of young. Interestingly, results also suggest that the expression of these individual reproductive differences tends to remain constant across varying environmental conditions. This means that when the going gets tough, the tough stay and they keep on producing pups. The moment they're born, we get to look at some individual differences because we can weigh these babies, just quickly weigh them, 
and right within a day or so of birth. And one of the things we see already is that they, they weigh different amounts. So we see right away that some mothers make bigger babies than others. And we know that that's repeatable because uh, some of the work that's been done by some of the grad students like Jen Manis and Kelly Prophet, two young women that worked with us have weighed an awful lot of uh, mothers and their babies with Bob Garrett. And they found that some mothers tend to make bigger babies than others. And they do that repeatedly year after year. And so we have a lot of individual variation. Why might that be important? Well, the size of the animal, we're focused primarily on females. The size of the animal probably has a lot to do with the size of the pups that they can produce and wean, how much of their body mass they can transfer to the pup through lactation and nursing, and how big that pup is at weaning probably has a lot to do with its probability of survival. In 2010, researchers began to study swimming behavior of Weddell pups using small temperature recording tags. The TempTag project we started as a pilot study about three years ago, we had the thought that perhaps females confer some sort of knowledge that's important in pup survival while they interact with the pups in the water. When they're first born, they don't swim. They don't know how to swim. And it takes them a couple days before the mom encourages them to get in the water and start swimming. So to get an idea of when they get in the water, and how often they're swimming, we've attached temperature sensor tags to their rear flippers. In Antarctica, the seawater is a constant minus 1.8 degrees Celsius, but the surrounding surface temperature can vary widely. So the temperature tag is right here on this, this pup, on his uh, rear flipper. So that's what we use to measure the ambient temperature. So three years ago, we deployed about 20 of them to see if they worked, because we engineered them ourselves, and they did. And then last year, we deployed about 140. And what we found is sort of what we suspected just looking at pups on the ice, and that is there's a lot of individual variability. We had one pup that at 35 days of age had only been in the water for a total of 140 minutes. And we had other pups that were in the water during that same time interval, the first 35 days of their lives, 1,400 minutes. So an order of magnitude difference from how much time pups spend in the water. So the consequences of this individual variation as far as first trying to quantify it, which we're doing quite well, is uh, twofold. One is when you have a collection of organisms and they, there's a lot of variation in individual organisms on how much they reproduce, how many young they produce, and how long they live. That has a major influence on the dynamics of the population as compared if all the animals live for the same amount of time and produce the same amount of young. There's fundamentally different dynamics when you have that sort of individual variation. So one major theme to try to understand the consequences of individual variation is the consequences of that variation in population dynamics. The other major theme is basic natural selection and evolutionary processes. So those 80% of the pups that never survive to come back and reproduce, well, the genes in those pups are not perpetuated in the future generations. The genetic makeup of those pups are selected against because they never contributed genes then uh, in their progeny to future generations, as opposed to a female that might live to be 29 years of age that produces 20 pups, well that female genes were passed on to many progeny in the next generation, and so those evolutionary and natural selection processes then drive the evolution of the species and has important consequences just for understanding this fundamental biological process that's in all organisms, whether they be bacteria or uh, a great big mammal like a Weddell seal or any other organism we have on Earth. What researchers are particularly interested in is whether or not that variability in swimming time, pup mass at weaning, and identity of the pup's mom have anything to do with predicting which animals survive and return to the colonies to reproduce. And that takes five to ten years to find out. We know we have differences among these animals in terms of performance, in terms of how long they live, and in terms of how many young they produce. 
and we'll be trying to understand how heritable that is in the future. As we get more generations of these animals, we'll start to be able to determine which of those features that are true about an animal are passed on to that animal's offspring, so inherited. Which of those features are not? We're also really interested in which features that an animal has that are different from other animals are due to the environment, and which are due to things like who its parents were and what its genetics were like. So it is very crucial to have uh, a long-term study to, uh, to understand and investigate both individual variation and environmental variation for a few reasons. The first one is if we want to understand environmental variation, we need a time frame which is long enough to encounter a lot of different environmental factors and environmental uh, conditions and then to try to understand the effect on the population dynamics and on the individuals. At some point in this project, we would love to be able to answer questions about nature versus nurture. Where do differences come from and which differences matter? What strategies are best? And are there better strategies for some animals and a very different strategy for another animal? Through this long-term study, Weddell Seal researchers will be able to learn more about what individual variation means to the future of this long-lived Antarctic marine mammal.